If you love wisdom, put your mind up to the ceiling Don't let it stay in the gutter Don't let your heart get all cluttered No, no, I did it, not stutter Listen to all that I've muttered Your life will only go well If you win wisdom or lovers Come inside Come inside Hey, what's going on? This is J.C. Johnson, and you're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And of course, you know, we're listening on North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. And today we are discussing the wisdom of diversity here today with special guest Goran Stefanovic. Yeah. Hello. 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 All right. So we are going to play a quick clip for you and then we'll be right back. I see the gollies in the building. What's going on? All right. The golly. Hey, what's going on, Wisdom Family? Each week on For the Love of Wisdom, we promote a new and free audiobook that we believe you will benefit from and become wiser by listening to. On today's show, we're talking about the wisdom of diversity. And so, the recommended book for this week is Inclusion, Diversity, the New Workplace, and the Will to Change. This book is about how businesses can and should embrace diversity and thrive as an organization. To download this free book today, just visit audibletrial.com slash love wisdom audibletrial.com slash love wisdom all right what's going on and welcome back you were listening to for the love of wisdom where philosophy meets the streets and we're gonna actually um do something interesting for you we're gonna play a clip of an interview that Goran did with Dr. Nada uh, at the Cleveland Cultural Garden. So it's pretty cool. Just a little bit of information about the Cleveland Cultural Gardens. It's one of Northeast Ohio's oldest and most beautiful treasures. Uh, more than 30 gardens there. It's designed and cultivated by distinct cultural and or nationality nationality groups in the Cleveland area. So this is really important because it shows diversity um, in Cleveland. And it's something that people even from outside of the area come to just because it's that impactful so it's pretty cool it's a uh, it's along martin luther king boulevard and east boulevards in rockefeller park so goran uh how was that experience in that interview that you had with dr Nada? Oh, it was great it was it was beautiful day it was a lot of people a lot of great food a lot of different cultures so i would recommend for anybody you know to to, to go down there for next year uh, they have that every year so don't miss it next year all right cool so let, let's jump right into it here it is the interview with dr nada can you tell us more about cleveland cultural gardens that are located in uh, Rockefeller park cleveland cultural gardens are a unique collection of public gardens located in cleveland and as you mentioned in rockefeller park uh, and they are our oldest Northeast Ohio treasure that are unique to the world. Some people claim that it's unique to the world. Uh, there are more than 30 gardens, and they represent the diversity and multiculturalism of Cleveland with the, the motto or mission, Peace Through Mutual Understanding. The gardens are founded in 1916 which means that we are in the 102nd year this year. The first garden was actually Shakespeare's garden, later on turned to be British garden. And that's how the whole movement started. And every nation said, well, you know, we would like to have our own garden. Okay, tell me uh, something about Serbian garden. The Serbian garden was founded in October 2008. And it features the central plaza with the marble mosaic that is reproduction of mosaic found in Hilander Monastery. Along, or in addition to that mosaic, there are ten busts of prominent people from Serbian history. And I can name them all if you want me to. So, Njegos and Mihailo Putin, uh, King Peter I, Nikola Tesla, Stevan Mokranjec, Vuk Karadžić, Milutin Milanković, 
Milena Eva Maric and Nadezhda Petrovic. And of course, uh, there is um, a bust of Saint Sava that's in Central Plaza. Uh, the person behind the Serbian garden, or per person that we can thank to have a Serbian garden in Cleveland, is uh, Alex Maceski, uh, the former president and publisher of The Plain Dealer. He started the initiative in 2006 to raise the funds for, for necessary uh, to create the Serbian garden, and as I said, in 2008, that vision came to, to fruition and we got the garden. Okay, uh, last year you mentioned earlier in our conversation that you organized the um, little choir. And uh, what can you say about it? Well, that was part of the One World Day, and One World Day um, is a celebration of, of uh, diversity in Cleveland. And this year is actually 73rd anniversary of One World Day. So in 2015, actually, I came to the idea to uh, introduce the Serbian Garden to the audience. So instead of having stationary uh, concert with kids, we decided to walk to the garden and present each of the prominent figures of Serbian, from Serbian history to the audience by talking about them and seeing or dedicated a specific song to that person, which later on turned into a song, and now we have our anthem. Uh, and just to mention that uh, I'm talking about Children's Choir, Serbian, Serbian Community Children's Choir, uh, with singers 2 to 14 years old. Great. Okay, can you tell me more who did music and who wrote the words? Yes. Uh, Serbian journalist... Uh, Ivan Kalozovic was very inspired by our performance and he reached out to me with lyrics and the name of the song is We Are Flowers from the Serbian Garden and then music is written by Vesna Veljkovic, a very prominent uh, composer of children's music in Serbia um, and video was produced by Bruno Čatalovic who is professor of cinematography at Tri-C. And this was Dr. Nada Martinovic, and uh, now we're going to listen the song from uh, Serbian Kids Choir from uh, Cleveland's Cultural Garden. So that, that was pretty interesting, pretty interesting interview there with um, Dr. Nada at the Cleveland Cultural Gardens. And it looks like even uh, they were playing some music there while you were there. Back on. OK, good. Uh, well, th this was a song from last year. From last year, they made it like with little choir. And mm -hmm. like she mentioned, there is there is kids from two years to 12 years old. They are singing the song about uh, Serbian cultural garden. So, you know, people from Serbia did it. And, and some of the important people from, from, from Cleveland that worked on that project. So it was pretty much interesting. Okay. Cause All right. It, it says there that... Um, you know, basically in the in the gardens, you can see uh, the poets, philosophers, peacemakers, composers, scientists, and others who have contributed to the cultures of the nationality garden. Yes, so. yes. I, I didn't see that in, in, in the other gardens. I was mm -hmm. in Russian and uh, it, it, Polish and um, Czech and you, you, maybe in um, which one was the um, the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have some monuments, but the other, I, I, I didn't see, I, I didn't see much. Okay. You know? So that's that's the difference between the uh, Serbian gardens and everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, a great place to check out if you're looking for something to do, maybe on a Saturday afternoon or something. Um, this this garden was actually founded in 1916, 
and it, it offers a lot of great educational opportunities. So this would be great if you're a school principal or something listen to, listening to this. You know, this would be a great place to send your students as a field trip, maybe. Um, it's a great place to relax, maybe go out on a date, um, just enjoy nature, take a walk, you know, ride your bike, whatever. Just, as long as you don't vandalize the place, you know, this is a great place to go. So, just, just enjoy it. Exactly. Enjoy it. Somebody put effort and, and, and time into it, so just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks like they're, they're actually trying to expand. Um, more gardens are currently in development, so that's something to look out for as well. Yeah, for the next year, for sure. Yeah, because they're, they're trying to represent everywhere, <clears throat> right? So it's a great thing that they're doing there. Good, good thing to do in Cleveland. Yeah, so we are getting ready to play some music for you, and um, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you, and this is J.C. Johnson for The Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. We got some rock coming up for you, especially for you, Goron. Here it is. Hey, Captain Knight. This is your girl, Juicy Jazzo, and I wanted to let you know I'm all about wisdom. Knowledge is power, power is money, and money makes the world go round. And you're listening to For the Love of Wisdom right now, leading out your speaker. <laughs> All right, welcome back. You are listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And this is your host, J.C. Johnson. So glad you could hang out with me this afternoon here as we are discussing the wisdom of diversity. Also have a special guest with me here today. Uh, you heard him a little bit in the first hour. Goes by the name of Jada Prince. Hello, hello. All right, so, um, so today, since we're talking about diversity, one thing that I think is pretty cool here is where it talks about an interracial marriage between um, Africans and Chinese. It says interracial marriages between Africans and Chinese is on the rise as one million Chinese live in Africa. So this is... You Wait, know, how many live in Africa? Uh, one million. Chinese people live in Africa? Yeah. So, so they're saying, you know, a lot more Africans are moving to China and a lot more Chinese are moving to Africa. So... Um, it's saying that there's a lot of growing economic ties between the two countries. I like that. Plus, that combination, they make very good kids. Look at uh, Kimora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons. Uh, she's Asian and he's uh, black, and they have the cutest kids. So, good for them. Yeah, yeah. Good Mo for them. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Right. Most definitely. That's awesome. Yeah, and so, you know, really, but, you know, this is saying that the reason why uh, there's, there's so much... Um, connection between the two is because of you know economic um strategies here you know they're they're linking together a lot more for different business ventures and it's causing a lot more to relocate as a result oh, and really? so most likely it's you know probably their kids that are there um you know who are um the ones who are you know getting married mostly to people who you know uh who are the majority wherever they are so you know, if someone's coming from China and they're going to Africa and to, you know, one of the countries in Africa and they're saying, well, you know, I want to adapt. You know, this is not China anymore. Right. Right. So um, the, everything is going to be more African than Chinese. You know, so that means the food that they're eating. That means oh, the, 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 the music that yeah, they're listening the to. And as well as the the, you know, dating prospects, they're also going to be different because Again, if there's only a small amount of Chinese people who are in Africa, the, the likelihood of them marrying another Chinese person is going to be small. So Africa is a huge continent, right? So if you think of one million people spread out in that whole continent, that's really not a whole lot. Right. So, But I do like that they're mingling like that. Cause sometimes I had this conversation with one of my friends not too long ago that I said, did you ever notice people from like cer certain races always end up seeing, like dating the same races? Like I don't get like do you notice that like a lot? Oh yeah. And I don't, I don't get it. I've seen me personally. I I don't think I've ever been with a white person. <laughs> um, but I just you know and I I think it's like you need to expand more. Just expand. So I like this. I like this story. I think it's a very good one. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it says that you know interracial marriage is actually something that's not common in china 
you know so i if believe you, that if you think it's not common in the u.s imagine what it's like in china <laughs> you know <laughs> it's definitely not the new right. cool thing right yeah. it's not necessarily something that goes on a lot so <laughs> You know, this is interesting how it's it's becoming more and more common. Um, but with with over one million Chinese um, migrants now living in Africa, it says that about uh, half a million Afri- uh, half a million Africans are also living in China. So you have a, a pretty good mixture going on there. And you know what? With all this moving and with all all the um, this blending with these two countries, I haven't heard anything bad about this either. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't seem like they're blending into each other's countries, and there's like problems. It seems like it's going really well. Oh no! Um, yeah, yeah, it's great so for that's the. That's like that is just a miracle in itself, and something that's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's, it's been great for the economy. It's it's been a win win uh, overall. Now there have been some some negative things that have been reported for yeah. example um they say that there's been some concern of some african women who are saying that they have been uh abandoned by their i guess by their chinese husbands this is you know not the <laughs> the majority <laughs> but it's saying it has happened for whatever reason who knows maybe the parents didn't agree or they were like, no, we got to put it into this. Or maybe don't they don't know. speak the same language, too. We got to remember that. Like, there is the language barrier, but. Yeah, oh, and, and, and that that can always be a challenge. And, you know, if, if they've been living there for a long time, they may have been able to pick up on the language. But one thing you, that's harder to pick up on sometimes is the culture or yeah. even the understanding oh, yeah. things. Like, you may know you may know the language, but you may not understand a joke in that language. Right? So you may be the only one at the table not laughing. And you kind of can feel like an outsider. Listen, I lived in Louisiana for a couple years, and I definitely know when you don't fit in with the culture, okay? Like, I might have looked like I could have fit in, but I'll tell you what, I didn't. Yeah. So, and that's, you're, you're very right with that, so. Yeah, that, that, that can be, that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, when you feel like you're the only one. And so, I can see how, you know, that can be an issue in relationships, too, because, You know, they people feel like, you know, they're not on the same page or whatever. But um, it says that in 2012, it looks like 53,000 um, uh, interracial couples, uh, you know, between you know African and Chinese actually uh, looks like they got married. In wow. 2012. Do we know anything about the divorce rates at all or do we just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, just to, I just out of curiosity, like, are they all all still together? Or because that's a big number. Yeah, I, I don't think all of them are because you know, just you know, as mentioned, you know, some of Got some abandoned. of the women were yeah uh, talking about being abandoned, but <laughs> I don't I don't think that's the majority. I think that that right. was just a you know maybe some isolated incidents. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. America, let's um let's learn something from this here. Oh yeah, yeah. I really like that. Most definitely, because, you know, we can't we can't stay stuck no. uh, in a certain way of doing things. Right. No. You know, we it's, it's time to, you know, to move forward, to, you know, progress, uh, because you have to think about it. Every single person, every human being is unique. You know, everyone is special, you know, so nobody is you know better than someone else. So if you were to say, well, there's something wrong with let's just say you say well there's something wrong with a a russian person uh marrying a australian person or something like that or you say there's something wrong with a uh, african person marrying a japanese person it's like all you're saying is that one person is better than the other or one person is less than the other right but you know if you if you don't think that then you're not even gonna care. You're not even gonna see that as a concern. If anything, you'll I think see it the as Japanese a positive. Japanese are so high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. I think the Japanese are high. Yeah, you know, and and you know, the thing is, people have you know different preferences so just you know just because a person has a preference so let's just say a guy you know he he prefers um you know may i don't know maybe he's uh, a white guy and he prefers an indian woman there's nothing wrong with that right yeah. it, there's nothing no. wrong with saying you know you you like a, a particular you know race or culture more than the other the, i guess the problem is when you're saying that this person is better than someone else that that's when it gets into some issues right right so you know but preferences you know just like having a having us you know certain 
interest. I mean, that's... Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with preferences. That's fine. I think people should have their preferences. That, that's what makes you human. Um, I know me for myself, like, I have preference. And I, I just couldn't date a white person only because I can see their veins <laughs> under their skin. I can okay. see their veins, and that grosses me out. So that uh. keeps me from that. So I have reason, reasoning for my preference, but it's nothing against... It's not like, you know, I hate... I hate them. Like, it's not like that. It's just I can't date you because I can see the veins in your arms and it crosses me out. Right. And, and that's that's very practical, right? right. You know, that's a, a practical reason. So, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, as long as it's something like that. But, but when it's something like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, because a person is raised to think, no, this, this one ethnic group is not as good as as your own ethnic group right. or or oh, even you know yeah or even if it's like a self-hatred type of thing to say well my ethnic group for whatever reason is not they're not good people or something like that or right. or if i stay with them i'm not going to be successful you know there's all types of um lies that people believe but hey as long as we're making decisions with the right motives it's all good i think we're growing away from that don't you i oh, honestly yeah. feel like we're growing away from like I, slowly but surely, we're getting away from that mentality by like labeling people by their ethnicity yeah, or the but, group. But more and more on that after this, you're listening to North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you. It's your boy, Tear It Up, Tommy Tom from Beyond Sports, and you're listening to For the Love of Wisdom. With your host, Jason Johnson. What's going on? Welcome back. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. And, you know, you're listening on North Coast Underground, where the underground starts with you here today with special guest Jada Prince. What's going on? Hello. Hello. So. Um, all right. I see uh, Will the Thrill. He's in the building. What's going on, Will? All right. So, uh, you know, right now uh, we're talking about the wisdom of diversity and, you know, before the break. Say what's up, Will. What up? How y'all doing today? Better yeah. now. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, better now. Um, one one thing we were talking about is interracial marriage in well in in China and in Africa because it, it looks like um, a lot more Africans are moving to China and a lot more uh, Chinese are moving to the continent of Africa. So there's um. Why though? Why are they moving? Economic reasons. Um, there's a lot of business opportunities there. So they're actually, you know, linking together a lot for, you know, different things. So, of course, you know, with technology advances and stuff like that, um, you know, the world is becoming smaller and smaller. And I, guess. I always thought in my head that like China did not have the good jobs, though. China has like, that's great what jobs. I thought. They, they just do don't pay great. Yeah, they, they don't pay great. So maybe that's why they're going to Africa. And but, then Africa is like. We'll take. Well, I don't and, know. You know. I don't know and, why. I, I don't know what the economic status is for most of the people in 97% of Africa. Uh huh. I mean, in the middle, I'm sure the jobs are scattered because there's not a whole lot of rural areas out there. Right. But, you know, in places like Egypt, there's jobs out there. And, you know, like up towards where water's at, right, where there's water's jobs at. there. It's a majority of the country, there's not a lot of water. There's not a lot of way to produce much of anything in Africa. Now, in China... Is there water in China? Yeah, we really. got water. I, just, I, I don't study enough of the, those other continents to know <laughs> what it's like. <laughs> I just know a little bit. <laughs> And, that, and, that's, and that's part of the issue. So, you know, earlier we were actually talking about how in, in the United States, it's not really pushed for us to know much about life outside of the United States. Whereas, you know, someone from another country, like let's just say somebody who's uh, from the Ukraine or, you know, let's just say they're from Uganda or wherever. They're probably taught to know much more about surrounding right. countries and surrounding continents, really, because they know that there's going to be more opportunity. That, that's why somebody from Europe, they may speak four or five different languages. You know, they may speak, you know, German and Russian and do, all yeah. these you know, all these different things just so that they can compete globally. Well, the, with the European market, the, the part of their thing is open borders. So someone who lives in, let's say, Germany can get a job in Spain. 
and they can cross the border with no repercussions. Without a passport? Without a passport. It's not required over there. Except for, I think, the Great Britain. Yeah, Britain. You have to have a passport. I to, know you have to have a passport to get to, like, London or something. Well, because, because of the, you know, their exiting from the European Union, their laws have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, but here in the United States, honestly... We're building walls. Well, <laughs> We're building... You can't part, get in with a passport. We got a wall. Well, part of our problem with our education system is they're not teaching to study anything else besides what they want you to. Right. That's why our education system has gone downhill. I live in the city of Cleveland. Our school district constantly gets Fs. Yeah. But they rebuild the schools every other year. Right. And, and, and that's they put the so much money into the schools and stuff. You know, like, it's crazy. It's like, where's this money going to? Part of the problem, and this is what I talk about on my show, the Lord's Will show, on, I'll be talking about, you know, a very different topic tomorrow, but, you know, I'm on Fridays from 4 to 5, and mm-hmm. what I talk about is the problem is the breakdown of the home. That's the problem. You don't have fathers in the home anymore. Right. The, the, in the United States, the federal government has taken over as the father. Right. They that's, don't care. That's true. Uh, you have too many single mothers out there. You do. And, and not only are they having one, two, three, X amount of children with X amount of men, they're, you know, they're not graduating high school. That's why we have the, uh, the school to prison pipeline, because nobody cares anymore. We stopped caring a long time ago. Back in the 90s, they used to promote this idea of sit down at the family table and talk. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. We're more on our cell phones now than anything else. Anything that is used as a tool is only as good as what you allow it to be used for. If you allow a tool to take the place of something else, that tool is no longer necessary. Yeah. I have some good tools, but I can't speak about them on this radio station. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know... <laughs> But, you know, there there's uh, definitely um, a lot of truth to, you know, what you're saying, Will, as far as that, the um, you know, the whole prison pipeline you're talking about. Families not, you know, interacting with each other anymore. Um, it's, it's crazy um, the way that society is going. But, I mean, it's to be expected because technology, all these things are great. But I guess sometimes the more you have, the more access you have to doing things that aren't right you you have more ability to do what's right but also to do what's not right at the same time so now as far as understanding other cultures we have the world at our fingertips they started you know back when the internet came out for pcs back in the what the late 90s yeah you know you had the whole world at your fingertips yeah it was harder to find information but people were willing to do it as soon as 2000 came around and people got scared of the internet, well, that kind of fell off. Now we look at cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, why Why would you want to fill your head with knowledge and things that can, you know, help you in life when you can watch a cat video? I mean, I don't understand. Why, why would you want to do that, Will? Did you see the one with the rat that was taking the shower? No. And I... he was literally, like, sudsing up. Oh, the YouTube's the devil start saying those things that are like oh these recommended videos for you and once i start watching those i mean i'm i'm done for the day i'm done you, you know, like four hours later i'm watching like a three-year-old girl rake leaves and jumping them and i'm like this is like so awesome their family is amazing <laughs> well see me when i watch youtube well when my wife and i watch youtube granted our views are completely different she likes watching cartoons and stuff like that which is fine i like watching vines we all have our problems i love vine vine's not what it used to be but that's another topic they don't really have it anymore they don't but they still keep producing videos they mm. they have over a million followers on mine congratulations yeah. why did now you, i have nothing why didn't you switch over to youtube with the rest of them? I, i'm on youtube still okay i still i still am on youtube i'm still on instagram i still make videos now what what's your youtube page name i'll check you out the same as my vine name jada prince 44 jada prince for j-a-y-d-a-p-r-i-n-c i think i've seen your a couple 44. of your vines but you probably did but um 
you know, you also have information on YouTube to, as well. Matthew Santoro gives out top 10 facts almost on a weekly basis. Mm. A couple days after his top 10 video, he does a top 50. He calls himself the knowledge wheel. The man spends hours on end looking up different facts for us, and he's probably one of the smartest people on the internet. Yeah, that's true. You know, we can do the same thing. A lot of people are just too lazy to do so. That's true. That's true. And, and that that right there, we could we could do a whole another show on that. <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe we should next time. But yeah, that's um that's true. But that I mean that's the world that we live in, right? And um, given that this is the world that we live in, you know, we really have to make the most of it. Um, and it's it's important that we get wisdom for ourselves because nobody's going to chase you down and try to give it to you necessarily i mean maybe that's what we're doing now sort of but you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to so it's up to you to fill yourself with knowledge and wisdom so that you can make great decisions but more on that after this you're listening to north coast underground where the underground starts with you you're now listening to for the love of wisdom on northcoastunderground.com where the underground starts with who no other but you All right, welcome back. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom, where philosophy meets the streets. This is your host, J.C. Johnson, and I have special guests here with me, Jada Prince. And we also got Will the Thrill. He just uh, stepped in from the Lord's Will Show. Something like that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, you know, right now we're talking about um, the wisdom of diversity, and we're getting ready to, you know, conclude the show for today. So... Um, just real quick before we, before we end, you know, I always like to, you know, just share a little bit of wisdom just from, you know, notable people to see what they have to say about it and also take a look at what the Bible has to say about it. So first we're going to take a look at a couple interesting quotes here that stood out to me. Um, one is from Elaine Diaz and I might get that wrong, but it's something like that, uh, it's, it's from Elaine, basically. And uh, it says, diversity requires commitment. Achieving the superior performance diversity can produce needs further action. Most notably, a commitment to development, a, a culture of to develop a culture of inclusion. People do not just need to be different. They need to be fully involved and feel their voices are heard. All right. So that's that's really important. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. And um, another one here is from Christine Tsai, and it says, in order to have a meaningful impact, companies should value diversity and inclusion from day one. And that kind of goes into uh, the book that was mentioned earlier, um, that that book is all about kind of like diversity in the workplace and the importance of that. And this really hits on that as well. You know, so in any company, in any family, any relationship, whatever, um, you know, diversity has to be valued because when it is, it it does have a great impact. Um, Here's uh, one more from Carson Kressley, and it says it's really important to share the idea that being different might feel like a problem at the time, but ultimately diversity is a strength. Right. So diversity is a strength not a not a weakness kind of thing and so that that's um something that's really um important to remember um it is important yeah so um that that is just something that you know to think about and you know here's uh just what the bible has to say about diversity these these uh verses really stand out to me at the beginning of the show uh one was mentioned from first corinthians that just talks about how you know the human body has all different parts Right. It has, um, you know, one, you know, you got hands, you got feet, you have legs, you have a nose, you have a mouth. Right. So it was saying that, the, you know, the nose basically can't say that, oh, um, I'm not as good as the mouth or, you know, um, I'm not as good as the ear. I need to start hearing, you know, the ear doesn't say I need to start smelling, you know, because if, if these different parts were to do that, that would just be total chaos. And uh, it's not necessary because each one plays a specific role for a reason and that's a good thing so that's the diversity of the human body 
And um, I, I know which one you're talking about. It's one of my favorite scriptures when talking about difference in talents as well. Right, right. Because not everybody is meant to do the same thing. Some people are meant to be president. Some people are meant to be the guy that picks up the trash. Yeah, exactly. Just because they're different, it doesn't make the one better than the other. They all end up six feet underground. The houses might be different, but you know that that final home is going to be the same for you. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely, and that's that that's the reality. And um, that that actually reminds me, in a few weeks, um, we're gonna have actually a two-part episode. We're gonna be talking about the uh, the wisdom of eternity, right? So basically, we're gonna be talking about in the first hour. Um, mortality and then the second hour immortality and we're gonna touch on a lot of these kind of issues some stuff to think about because sometimes we you know we look at it like we think that all we see is all that there is but there's so much more to life you know um there's so much more to the world really because if you live in cleveland right now we're in the cleveland area right but if you've never traveled outside of cleveland there's things that you don't know about. Like I'm originally from the Washington DC area. I moved here two years ago. This is like a foreign land to me. It's totally different. Florida was the same way for me. Trust me. I understand brother. Yeah. So that's how it is. However, um, you know, let's just say I had never left from there. Let's say I'd never traveled anywhere else. My, my perspective, my view of the world would be different. Like, let's just say um, like I, where I grew up, it was it was very diverse. You know, there's people from everywhere. Um, a lot of people from uh, Africa, a lot of people from different uh, Asian countries, um, you know, people from, you know, all, all European countries, basically people from everywhere. So, you know, I pretty much, um, you know, grew up around everyone. So um, to come to a place like kind of like this area where to me, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be as diverse. I don't know about about for you two since you're y'all are oh my God. either from here or you've been here longer i don't know but i'm from the country so coming even coming here to like independence i'm like wow it's so diverse there's so much oh wow okay yeah <laughs> so uh yeah, I, I definitely feel yeah yeah so even that is interesting because yeah so for you this is diverse right <laughs> it's very diverse right whereas to, to me it, it seems less diverse out here i'm from the west side of cleveland mm -hmm. you've got a decent mixture of everything out here just you know there's less diversity of color mm -hmm. there might be diversity of knowledge but there's a difference far greater difference between the two and um yeah it, it just seems like i don't know yeah this whole east east side west side thing you know and for people who aren't from cleveland it's really hard to understand you know we're not talking about like biggie tupac like la <laughs> versus new york you know this is the east side of cleveland versus the west, the west side, side of cleveland right you want to uh, be on the west side well uh, yeah and you know people people have their preferences but you know one one verse i, I really want to leave you all with before we conclude for today um it says that you must be fair in judgment you must not show special favor to the poor and you must not show special favor to important people. You must be fair when you judge your neighbor. That's from Leviticus 19.15. So it doesn't matter if a person has a lot or it has a little or has a little. You should treat everyone the same because everyone has the same value. But more on that next week. You're listening to For the Love of Wisdom on North Coast Underground. We'll be back later. Knowledge is power. Power is money. And money makes the world go right. Money, power, respect. I get it. Yeah, I'm with it. Only get better with time. You got on my mind with well, some There's no limit. There's no limit. Get up and get it. Can achieve the impossible. Conquer every obstacle. Exhausted from grinding, constantly pushing. Do what they say I could. Life is what you make it. Knowledge is power. Don't let them take it. Yeah.